So I just finished a quick first playthrough of the new game Gotham Knights. And like a lot of games, this one was released with noticeable performance issues. Hopefully those get mitigated by future updates, but for now I'm going to share the settings I endlessly refined to get my meager 1660 Ti to keep the game running between 40 and 50 FPS with a good looking image for the vast majority of my 25 hour first playthrough. These are settings I can confidently recommend to anyone playing on PC without a high end setup. The first thing you should know is that the game has a built in performance overlay. Hit escape and enter the options and under UI you'll see that you can turn on an FPS or frame timing overlay and scale its size to your preference. Most of the time I ran the game windowed at 1600 by 900, but I sometimes ran it full screen as well and whatever hit I took to performance by running at 1920 by 1080 was made up for by the extra detail. So run it at any resolution you like, windowed or not. Windowed 1600 by 900 is just my preference for most games since I tab out frequently. This game is one of the ones nice enough to let you choose whether the game pauses when you tab out of the window. That option is under the general tab. Worth noting that the game also lets you drag and resize the window edge and get some non-standard resolutions as well. The key to getting a decent experience on PC with a modest setup is to use the dynamic resolution options, which are very well implemented in this game. The game frame rate swings around a lot. Indoor scenes generally run at high FPS, but cutscenes tend to run significantly lower because they're running more detailed geometry and effects. The reason they're all in-game and not pre-rendered, by the way, is so that you can see your character and outfit choices in them, which is pretty cool. Out in the city is where the FPS swings the most. FPS drops very quickly when you're racing on the motorcycle, for instance. So basically, I'd say the game generally ranges from 20 to 60 FPS on a 1660 Ti. And that wide of a swing is really distracting. So the key to making the game look smoother is narrowing down that FPS range. The easy way to do that is just to set a frame limit, which is what they do on consoles. If you set the cap to 30 FPS, then the swings are just from 20 to 30 and it doesn't feel so bad. But of course, 30 doesn't really look great when there's a lot of motion happening. But if you use dynamic resolution, then in those 20 FPS situations, we can have the engine render at a lower resolution and then do a smart upscale. With that, we can usually get all the way to 40 FPS just by rendering at 80% resolution. The exact min-max scales available depends on your FPS limits and your window resolution. The image is a little blurrier, of course, but with smart image sharpening applied to the upscale, it actually still looks quite good. You can also apply a dumb sharpening filter on top of that. It costs nothing performance-wise, but I don't bother with it because the shimmery sharpening artifacts it introduces aren't worth the sharper image it gives you, in my opinion. So my FPS min is 40 and the engine will upscale when it has to to try and hit that. But then you see that my FPS cap is not 60, it's 50. The higher you set the cap, the more often the dynamic renderer will upscale and the blurrier the game I image will be on average. So you don't want to set this higher than you need to. The game action looks pretty smooth at 50. So in practice, going even to 60 FPS causes the dynamic renderer to make your game blurry twice as often for an almost imperceptible improvement to your average FPS. Since even with the upscale, the game struggles to provide a consistent 40 FPS, the further the max is from that, the swingier and more distracting the frame timing is going to be anyway. So having the dynamic renderer target 40 to 50 FPS is really the sweet spot. The game will almost always run in that range and feel pretty stable. And the price you pay is that the image blurs a little in demanding scenes. The other settings down the page are pretty straightforward. More FOV means more stuff in view to be rendered, which means lower performance. Most of the time you can have this at 70 and the game would feel just fine and, and run a little faster. The reason it needs to be as high as 85 is for group fights. Below 85 FOV and thugs start sneaking up on you in your blind spots. Motion blur is well implemented in this game and it helps make the frame rate look smoother, so I recommend that. Ambient occlusion is the best bang for buck lighting effect in almost every game, including this one. Bloom adds a greater sense of atmosphere and makes lighting more realistic for very cheap. You notice it, especially out in the city by the neon lights. Chromatic aberration, I really didn't notice anywhere. Uh, that's sort of a personal pref preference. I don't use it because it's strictly a lens effect with no analog to the human eye, but you can use it if you want. Depth of field, you can also take a relief. It really didn't seem to affect performance at all, and you only notice uh, whether it's on or not in cutscenes. So. Makes almost no difference whether you have this on or not. Uh, 
texture anti aliasing Gen 5 is the best anti alias method. You see that if you use the Gen 5 upscaler, which I am, you're locked into using the Gen 5 anti aliaser as well, which, I mean, no big deal, but that's just how it works. Lowering textures didn't improve performance as much as it does for other games, so that's why I have it at high, though with the upscaler blurring, you won't benefit from the highest setting. So high, high is pretty much the right value here. I always have shadows low in almost every game because upscaled shadow textures have blurry edges, which is actually more realistic. So no, no reason to waste processing calculating shadows that look less realistic. Post-processing needs to be at least medium in order to use the motion blur effect. Uh, otherwise, I really couldn't tell you what gets changed by the effects and post-processing settings. View distance and environment density matter for wandering the city. Even at the highest density setting, the city still looks kind of empty, so you might as well put it as low as possible and improve performance. The texture pop is kind of distracting on some roads though, so I think it's worth setting the view distance to medium for that. Brightness, contrast, and saturation I've saved last because they're actually unusually tricky settings in this game because the indoor and outdoor scenes are so different it's hard to find values that make all the scenes look good and the exact values you use depend on your monitor and room lighting. So it's hard for me to just, you know, say copy the values I have here. In general, the game looks better darker. That's especially true when you're doing night patrols in the city. And of course, the more black you make the image, the more you're gonna hide any loss of detail from lowering the other graphic settings. However, there are a lot of spooky low light interior scenes in the game. So you can only make the image so dark without making those sections unplayable. So you're forced to use a middle of the road brightness uh, setting for that reason. Indoors, you need it brighter. Outdoors, you want it as dark as possible. So you basically just need to make it just bright enough that indoor scenes are playable. And unfortunately that means the outside uh, scenes in the city just look way too bright. They just don't look good. Um, now you can make it look better with a bit of extra uh, contrast, but it's very tricky to get the contrast settings just right. If you boost the contrast setting a little, you'll crush some blacks and the game looks darker. Outdoors will look better. But once again, the indoor levels will be too dark. However, with the right combination of contrast and saturation, you can make it work. Virtually every indoor and outdoor environment is filled with vibrant lights and contrasting colors. So with enough saturation, you can still see important objects in the indoor scenes and that additional color contrast is enough to make them playable even though they're too dark. But you can't just max out the contrast to darken the image and max out the, the saturation to fix the indoor scenes because if the night city becomes too saturated, it starts looking really cartoony. And when you increase the overall contrast, the outdoor scenes actually look more saturated, even if you don't actually change the saturation setting. So it's a very delicate balance. And uh, if you have any doubt, just, just leave them all at 50. Anyway, there's my explanation of the, uh, the settings that I recommend. Uh, I hope that helps.